Margate has gone through a lot of changes over the years. Um, it started off in terms of being a tourist town as being really quite a fancy tourist town in the 1700s. The Margate that I remember um, from my childhood in the 70s was a really exciting, full and I don't know, it was a place that had a, an edge to it but maybe that's always the case with seaside towns, they're where people go to escape. And then everything started changing, attractions started closing, we lost Dreamland, uh, we lost the Margate Museum, we lost the Tudor House, we lost the Margate Caves. I run the Shell Grotto and for a while we were the only standing tourist attraction left in the town. I and a group of other people um, received an email in 2010 which said, do you want to come to a meeting? because I don't know if you realise, but there's been a planning application approved to build houses on top of the Margate Caves. And if that particular set of houses are built, it will immediately shut the caves off from the main street. So effectively, it would destroy the caves. I thought, well, I'll go along to the meeting. And it was actually held here at the grotto, right where we're sitting. The result of that meeting was we formed the Friends of Margate Caves and we said, hang on a minute. If the future of Margate is an art gallery and visitors and enlivening our community so that we all think what a great place to live, why are we getting rid of something that people care about? Well, in about 2005, um, the actual caves themselves were closed on health and safety grounds, but um, local residents were very firm that they wanted the caves reopened, but also to provide something on the site. Years ago, there used to be a little shop here, and it was very much part of the whole tourism uh, product. So to have a community centre, to have perhaps somewhere where people can just drop in and meet friends was going to be very important in this part of my ward. The community-led project support funding came just at the right time for us. There is actually so much paper that has to be generated before you can start doing stuff, and all that paper costs money to generate. The funding that we got has paid for all of that difficult stuff. It's paid for us to engage an architect, a quantity surveyor, a structural engineer, a habitat survey, a utility survey, the mechanical and engineer consultant, all of those people have been engaged with this funding. So we've gone from some sort of concept drawings to the point where really soon we'll be able to put in a full planning application. And there's absolutely no way we could have done that as quickly as we've done that without the funding. So the plans evolved slightly. What they now are, are to make the caves safe, reopen the caves, and at ground level build a visitor centre with all the stuff that a modern tourist attraction needs. And then also a slightly separate building uh, that includes facilities for community use, which might be meeting rooms or it might be school visits or it could be anything really. And the plan is that the commercial part of the business sustains the community part of the business. I think the advantage of having a community-led project is that people have no vested interest in this. They want this because their hearts and souls are in this community. So to have a community centre in the heart of here that supports a reopened caves would be brilliant. The town is unrecognisable now to how it was ten years ago and in 10 years it will be unrecognisable again. And also, you know, continue to diversify and build in terms of creating employment, in terms of spreading the regeneration out. In our case, we're spreading it up the hill into Cliftonville, you know, injecting some civic pride in an area that really needs it at the moment. So yeah, Margate's definitely turned a corner, still got a way to go.